אנחנו מככבים באיזה סרט? השאלה אם מותר לככב בסרט ביום טוב או He just look at us and say, what are they doing here? If we live in fantasy, they live in denial. And one day, we should both come to reality. And the solution is in fairness. Fair is fair for both sides. I deserve to go back and live in our house. Nineteen-sixty-seven was a fateful turning point for Jerusalem. The Cradle of Holiness added another chapter to its long and bloody history. After six days of intense fighting, the whole of Palestine, including all of Jerusalem, fell into the hands of Israel. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians joined the refugees of 1948 in surrounding countries. At the LMB Bridge, which was completely broken, anybody who's passing the LMB Bridge, they used to collect his passport. They have buses at Damascus Gate calling for people for free ride to Amman. Free ride to Amman. My father said, I've heard, I've learned it once, but I will not repeat the same mistake. I will not leave Jerusalem, nor my family will leave Jerusalem. We'll stay in Jerusalem, whatever is the cost. لا أستطيع أن أصف الغصة التي أصبنا بها في ذلك الوقت، وخاصة عندما سقطت الأراضي الضفة الغربية وغزة، وبالذات احتلت القدس. The defeat of 1967 shocked the Arab world. The loss of Jerusalem and the images of the destruction of the Arab armies at the hands of Israel were too much to handle. Meanwhile, Israel became intoxicated by its victory and its newfound position of power in the region. The days, weeks and months that followed started to reveal more and more of Israel's intentions and plans for Jerusalem. Israel wanted to ensure that its conquest of Jerusalem would be the final one. The Palestinian Maghrabi quarter in the Old City was the first to meet the new occupier. The decision was made to destroy it and to expel its 600 inhabitants to make way for the Western Wall Plaza. When they started demolishing the Maghreb Quarter in the old city, I saw Teddy Kolek, the mayor of Jerusalem, his assistants, Miron Din Veniste, Diane, Rabin, and others, rushing to that quarter and making sure that the order would be implemented now without any delay. And still when I think about it today, there were many excuses that I can bring out. You see, they had the price to be paid for the fact that Jews were not allowed to go to the Western War. Days after the occupation of the city, the boundaries of East Jerusalem were expanded from 6 to 70 square kilometres, stripping 28 surrounding Palestinian villages of their agricultural lands. Populous Palestinian neighbourhoods such as Abu Dis, Azariya, Hizma and Al-Ram 
were pushed outside the new boundary and 40% of the expanded land was designated as green areas. Off limits for Palestinian housing and development, squeezing the Palestinians in Jerusalem into only 13% of their land. Soon after, the new boundaries of the city were annexed to the State of Israel and Jerusalem was declared the eternal capital of the Jewish state. מדובר ב-70,000 דונם שסופחו לעיר, אלא שישראל רצתה לספח את האדמה אבל לא את התושבים. הרעיון שהם רצו לטפח זה הרעיון של מקסימום לנד ומינימום פיפל. They wanted a capital uh, that would have a Jewish majority, but that would also be fairly large in size. So you see the phenomenon again and again along the borders of the municipality where uh, Arab villages are just outside the city limits, but their lands are inside. Following the annexation, Israel conducted a census of the city. Only Palestinians who were present at the time were issued an ID card, making them residents of the city. Israeli citizenship was offered to these Palestinians in East Jerusalem if they met certain conditions, including swearing allegiance to the State of Israel, proving they were not citizens of any other country and demonstrating some knowledge of Hebrew. Most Palestinians were not interested. They consider us as if we as tourists, the 250,000 Palestinians in Israel, as if they are tourists came to Israel and settled there and the Israelis are tolerating their existence, but they are not legitimizing their existence. The law governing residency is called the law for entry into Israel. So it's obviously completely inappropriate to apply this law to East Jerusalem Palestinians. They did not enter Israel. Israel uh, came to them, annexed the area where they had been living, uh, maybe for generations, uh, and then imposed uh, Israeli law on them, including the citizenship and entry into Israel law. By the end of 1967, Israel had complete control over the land and its people. It was time to put its policy to work. The game in Jerusalem was demography. The Israeli policy was directed towards the land. They needed the land to build settlements, to create facts on the ground, and to ensure a Jewish demographic superiority. Confiscating land from the Palestinians became a regular practice. Israel's desire for a large Jewish capital in Jerusalem led to a massive land grab. Palestinians resisted the theft of their lands and the destruction of their lives, but the bulldozers were stronger. The confiscated lands soon became home to massive settlement projects in newly occupied East Jerusalem. By 1969, the first Israeli families moved into Ramat Eshkol, Israel's first settlement in East Jerusalem. The war of facts on the ground and demographic balance was underway. Home construction in East Jerusalem was booming, but everyone. For a Palestinian to obtain a building permit, he must go through a long and costly process which can sometimes take up to 10 years. And sometimes the cost of the permit is more than the cost of the building itself, forcing the Palestinians to build without a permit. And when they do, the Israeli police and bulldozers are waiting. فقت الصباح رحت على المدرسة لقيت جرافات نازلين فقلنا ابصر دار مين رح تنهد يعني ما كانش ولا اشي ولا احساس انه دارنا ولا اشي فرجعت من المدرسة ولقيت هذا ابن عمي طالع بقول لي والله ان داركم نهدت قلت له لا شو دارنا نهدت بتمزح انت وانا نازلة في الطريق قلت يا ربي يكون بمزح مش تكون حقيقة اجيت لقيت عماتي وامي وهيك كلهم قاعدين باب الدار وبيعيطوا ما سألت امي قلت لها وين كتبي وين اغراضي ما سألت